Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also mentioned by name in the Old Testament. It's mentioned in the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. In Hebrew, I will say, it says, Hikko mamitakim vikullu muhammadim zaidudi zairai baina Jerusalem. He is more sweet. He is altogether lovely. He is my beloved. He is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. Here, the name of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is there. It says Muhammadim. Thank you so much for watching and welcome back. In the last video, I included a clip of the amazing, the wonderful, the one and only Zakir Naik. And there was some content on that clip that I didn't address. It's been addressed numerous times, but I couldn't resist. I just had to add my own input to it. And this is the claim that Zakir Naik advances that Muhammad is mentioned by name in the Song of Solomon. Chapter 5, let's go ahead and watch Zakir Naik doing what hopefully only Zakir Naik does. Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. I'm quoting in Hebrew. Okay, Zakir Naik says he's quoting in Hebrew. Is he really? Let's listen to his quote. We'll start with uh, just the first couple of words. Hikko mamatakim. Hikko mamatakim. Hikko Mama Takim. Let's look at what the Hebrew actually says here. All right, so this is the word. It's Mama. It's Mam Takim. Okay, that's what the word is. He's saying Mama Takim. Now, why does this matter? Well, it matters because it illustrates that he doesn't know the very basics of Hebrew syllabification pronunciation. Okay, this is a shawa or shava. It's a half vowel. It's a vowel in Hebrew that has no vowel class or no vowel type. Okay, there's really nothing analogous to it in English, so it is what it is. Now, the shawa can be vocal or silent. It's silent if it's preceded by a short vowel, and here we have a short vowel. This horizontal stroke here is called a pathic. It's a short A-class vowel that immediately precedes the shawa, which means the shawa is silent. So it's not mama takim, it's mam takim. That's why when you look at the transliteration over here, it's one syllable, mom, not mama. Okay, so for someone who knows Hebrew and listens to Zakir Naik, it's like, I, I don't know what you're quoting, but it illustrates that he doesn't even know the basics of Hebrew slavification pronunciation, but it doesn't stop there. Let's, uh, let's go a little bit further. All right, so there you, there you heard it. Let me, let me play that again. Did you, did you hear it that time? Zay duty. Zay duty. Okay. Zay duty. Uh, you, you heard it. You heard it from Zachary Nike first. This is the word that Zachary Nike is referring to in Hebrew. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a long O class vowel. Okay. This is a holom vav right here. It's, it's not duty. Okay. It, it's, Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I'm not going to be able to keep my composure. Let's let's move on to the next one. There's there's an interesting phrase, Baina Jerusalem. Did you hear that? Let's let's listen to that again. Baina Jerusalem. What is he talking about? Let's go back to the Hebrew text. Right here we have Banoth. Okay, and there's no J in Hebrew. Okay, let me drag the magnifier up again. So you have banoth, which is daughters, plural, construct form, daughters of. And then he says Jerusalem. I don't know what Jerusalem is. Okay, in Hebrew, there's no J. If you're going to quote from the Hebrew, I'm quoting in Hebrew, then quote the Hebrew. Don't add consonants that aren't in the Hebrew alphabet. There's a start. So the first consonant for ya here, or for Jerusalem, is, uh, the way it's translated in English is a yod, okay? It's Yerushalam, or Yerushalayim is the other form that you'll see in Hebrew. So if you're going to quote Hebrew, then quote Hebrew. Don't quote English consonants forced into the Hebrew alphabet. Banoth, he doesn't say banoth, he says benai. Did you hear that? Bainai, bainai, bainai. He says benai. Now what is benai? Let's look at the Hebrew Bible elsewhere. Here we have all the sons of Perez, sons of, okay? Daughters of in the Song of Solomon, sons of. Now, what is sons of in Hebrew? Over here, we have kol, bane, okay? The plural construct form of sons is bane, of daughters, banoth. So, Zachary Naik means to say, over here, he means to say banoth in the Song of Solomon, but instead, he's saying bane, he means to say daughters of Jerusalem, but he says sons of. So, 
what do we know from this so far? Well, we know that we're on very good grounds. I mean, for me, I want to learn Hebrew. I want to learn what the Hebrew Bible says from someone who doesn't even know how to pronounce basic Hebrew words. I want to learn Hebrew from someone who doesn't even know basic Hebrew pronunciation and syllabification. That's what I want to do. And what we know from this short quote that Zachary and I attempts to render in Hebrew, what we know is that we are on very good grounds for believing what Zachary Nike says about finding the name of Muhammad in Song of Solomon 5.16. I mean, what more credible source could you go to? So you may look at uh, my screen here and say, Song of Solomon 5.16, I don't see Muhammad in the English translation. Okay, I have the words highlighted for the Hebrew and the English, but it doesn't say Muhammad. But Zachary Nike says Muhammad is mentioned by name, so what's going on here? Well, Here's what's going on. You're not using the right translation. Maybe, maybe you're using some translations like the ESV or the New King James, or King James, or the NIV. What you need to use is the ZNT. The ZNT. That is the Zakir Nike translation. Okay? Now, you may say, well, I haven't, I don't know where this translation is. How do I find it? Well, it's only for academics, okay? It's not for you common people. It's just for people like Dr. Zakir Naik. So what I've done for you is um, I've run a search of where this term occurs in Hebrew. And you can see, let me switch to English. Now, I'm still in the ESV. I'm not in the Zakir Naik translation. But I want to show you that in all of the places this word occurs, um, and nowhere is it translated as Muhammad. Okay? But that will change when we look at the Zakir Naik translation. So I'm going to take some of these references and I'm actually going to look them up in the Zakir Nike translation and post them on the screen for you. Okay, so let's see what the Zakir Nike translation, the ZNT, has to say about some of these texts. All right, now first of all, we'll start off with the obvious Song of Solomon 5.16. And you can see the, the quality of the scribal corrections here is just astounding. I mean, you can see why this is the academic-only version of the Zakir Nike translation. His mouth is most sweet, and he is altogether Muhammad. This is my beloved, and this is my friend, O sons of Jerusalem. Now, again, the, the text actually reads daughters of Jerusalem, but Zachary Nike says sons of Jerusalem. <laughs> so, once again, we have um, the, you know, the ZNT here is just coming through in all of its glory. I'm quoting in Hebrew. You remember I did a search earlier to see where else this word occurs that Zachary Knight claims is the name of Muhammad. And I pulled a couple of those texts out. And I do have to say the Zachary Knight translation is at least consistent. It is consistent. Um, so here are a couple of those references. Second Chronicles 36. And they burned the house of God and broke down the wall of Jerusalem and burned all its palaces with fire and destroyed all its Muhammad vessels. Okay. From Isaiah. Our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised you has been burned by fire and all our Muhammad places have become ruins. And then, of course, from Lamentations 2. And he has killed all all who were Muhammad in our eyes. Sounds like Muhammad, you know, getting burned and killed. It sounds like a pretty rough day. You almost feel bad for the guy. But this is the, you know, right from the Zakir Nike translation. So we can see that Muhammad is not only in Song of Solomon 516, but elsewhere uh, in the Hebrew Bible as well, hidden there in the Hebrew text, being burned and killed and so forth. Have you ever wondered why there are so many a hadith which testify to Muhammad's engraved ring? Have you ever wondered why in the Quran it said that Solomon was given the power to control the wind? Have you ever wondered why Muhammad thought that some dogs were the shaitan? And after you're finished laughing at the story where a rock runs off with Moses' clothes, have you ever wondered what the source for that story is? Have you ever wondered why the story of Adam and Iblis in the Quran sounds so much like pre-existing legend? We'll be looking at possible answers to these questions and more as we continue a source-critical journey into the primary texts of Islam and the connections between them and tales of mysticism, memoirs of magic, and the folklore of antiquity. I hope you'll join us on my channel for what will no doubt continue to be a fascinating journey through the tales of the ancients.